We uh, often talk here on The Bridge about how spoiled we are. And today I feel so incredibly spoiled to have Lissy in the studio. Uh, you're not even here to per, you know, to promote a show. You, you just came in to play for us. I did, yeah. You guys asked and I said, sure. So, um, yeah, I flew in this morning and I'll leave tonight. It's just uh, so nice of you to do that. I've heard the new record. It's not out till February 12th. It's called My Wild West. And it should just start off with congratulations. What a great piece of work. Oh, thank you so much. You know, it's like we live in an age where people get like one song and then filler. Mm. And that's a it's a, just a really consistently strong piece of work. And I... Uh, I got the sense that, you know, even though this is only like your third album, that you kind of seized control this time. I really did. And it was also, I think, in part, like I had decided not to make an album. And then when I decided I wasn't going to make one, I was like, well, I have just a few songs I should probably finish. I'll just put them on SoundCloud. And I uh, went to this producer, Kurt Schneider in L.A., who's a friend of mine. And he helped me finish uh, some things I'd started. And then before I knew it, I was bringing him new songs. And then we had a whole album. And it, so it was sort of like reverse psychology myself. I just like totally had a great time. I was being creative and not judging anything I was coming up with. And I think that's the best way to make an album. So I really enjoyed the process. And you did this completely independently. You funded it yourself and mm -hmm. no interference, no, no guidance. No, I mean, initially there was a time we had some stops and starts with making an album and I was funding it myself, but there was more pe there were more people kind of involved that had expectations and you know, just earlier this year, I was just like, uh-uh, like, I'm done. I'm buying a farm in Iowa. I'm, like, I'm not going to make an album. <laughs> and, I, and I was seriously, like, just ready to be like, I'll just, like, get in my car and drive around and play shows. Like, I don't really want to be in the music business. But then it freed me up to, like, and really enjoy the songs I was writing and, you know, not have a critic either in my head or coming from an A&R guy or whoever to say, like, oh, that song's not quite strong enough, you know? So I... You know, really, yeah, it was very freeing. Well, it's and a spectacular piece of work. It, thank it, you. It really worked. The new album, My Wild West, is out February 12th. And although you can't get it now, you can pre-order it. Mm -hmm. And when you do that, you get a couple of songs free immediately. Don't You Give Up On Me and Hero. And you can do that at any of the normal places that you go for music. Or you can just do it through We'd We'd love to hear a little bit of music. Yeah. Uh, I'll play um, kind of the, the first song that came out so far on my wild west it's called hero Hey, boy. 
I absolutely love that. That was so much fun. We've been playing that quite a bit on the radio. Um, oh, you have been. Thank yeah, you for yeah, that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Absolutely. I really like that song a lot personally. So, that one kind of yeah. poured out of you. It really did. It was a, you know, I was already kind of like close to being finished with the songs I was working on with Kurt and um, was like packing up my stuff and getting ready to move out of California and sitting around the house and um, just sat down, you know, had had this idea and sat down at my guitar and it just all kind of came at once. Um, and then I took it to Kurt and we tracked it with some uh, neighbors of his. <laughs> and, uh, that was pretty much it. Like it was just the vocal that I laid down as the vocal that you hear on the record. So, wow. Yeah. Pretty great. Uh, we're speaking with Lissy, who's in our studios live here at the bridge today. And the new album, My Wild West, is out February 12th. And if you pre order it, the song that you just heard, you get the studio version of that, along with the single, Don't You Give Up on Me. Uh, you know, both of those songs uh, have videos that are attached to them, and they're just, they're, they're great. Um, <laughs> they're bizarre, but they're awesome. Yeah. So do you want to uh, tell the story about how that came to be? Yeah. Well, I was just doing some writing and recording in Nashville um, in October, like just to continue creating. I don't really know what I'm going to do with it, but I met this guy Talon um, and he's awesome and uh, does videos and uh, he, he had all this like archived footage. So he was making, instead of doing like a typical lyric video, um, I just said, like, set his imagination wild. And I said, like, do whatever you want. And he came back with, like, these really interesting, bizarre um, kind of lyric videos for uh, Hero and Don't You Give Up On Me that are, like, archived found footage that he he was able to get access to. Like home movies of yeah. kids. And I, and I have to, to tell you the truth. I'm sitting there and, I, like, I, I was watching the videos before I had read the stories about it being found footage. And, like, I'm trying to decide whether, you know, whether particularly the superhero girl, yeah, if that's you. you know, it. it's, it's like, like, I want it to be you. It you actually know? looks so much like my sister when she was little that my sister was kind of weirded out when she saw it. Like, that's not me, but it looks exactly like me. So, yeah, it's a little bit... The, my mom had this really amazing interpretation of what she thought it it was what it meant, you know. So I just was like letting everyone have their own experience with it. Yeah, and the you know the there's one that's sort of shot like a western with uh, the lead actors. I think none of them past the age of about seven. Yeah, they're babies. <laughs> they're like baby cowboys, and it's really strange. <laughs> yeah, very strange. <laughs> and then the superhero one looks like it was shot. That that one looks like it was maybe shot in the '60s or something. But then the superhero one looks like it was shot. Maybe in the 80s? You know, I think both of them were shot in like the 70s or 80s, but I'm not yeah. entirely sure. But they're they're just cool. Lissy.com if you want to check those yeah. out. Uh, you know the song Hero when you were performing, you said, I want my 40 acres. It's like uh, that's just there's that's there's no editorial spin there. <laughs> you know, you said you you were moving to Iowa and, and you're sort of mid-move now. Yeah, so it is my whole life, like, I kind of always had this romanticized thing of, like, I'm going to have a farm in Iowa someday. And because I was just looking to sort of shake things up and go on a different path, you know, this year, it all happened very quickly. But I bought, um, I have 10 acres. And I'm trying to get another 37. So then I'll have almost 50. But I just like the idea of, like, having my own land and a place that's my, you know, I lo love being out in nature and outdoors. And I'm... Um, uh, you know, I have a lot of plans for what I want to do with my with my land. So I, I'm stoked. But I'm mid-move. I'm fixing up a house. I'm always on tour. So maybe in May I'll move in. <laughs> my stuff's in storage <laughs> and has been since June. So it's like a year of my things being storage, which is crazy. So I don't think you probably have a LinkedIn profile. I don't know that you would need one. But let's see, beekeeper. Yeah, I'm gonna, I want to do that. But it's not going to be for like another year or two. But I would like to convert all my tillable acreage into like um, just like pollinator, like wildflowers. There's actually like a state program that's like the pollinator series. And then you just, you know, you're there to support bees and butterflies and birds and give the land a rest. You know, I think the thing that's so interesting to me about your move is that you've been living in Ojai. And it's like, it's just such a beautiful place. I know it and, really is, and I had a great house with great landlords. I'd rented, um, but I had like the, mo the most perfect porch. So I'm hoping and I can recreate the porch in my new house that I'm uh, fixing up. I, I just felt like your move was sort of the narrative thread that sort of worked its way through a whole bunch of this record. It, that transition. 
It did. And, you know, it was all very, like, kind of subconscious and and really led itself in a way that I wasn't aware of. Like, when I wrote Wild West, um, I wasn't planning on moving. But, like, a lot of Wild West is about sort of setting off on your own and, and you know, having having faith and knowing that, like, you know, and, you know, anything's possible and you can you can do this. And, um, you know, I wasn't even aware that I was longing for, like, this new chapter yet so it all kind of was like a uh, writing the songs helped me find my true desire in a way if that if that makes yeah. sense and um and so yeah like, I mean definitely my wild west is is about my 12 years in California the first track's called Hollywood the last track's called Ojai and it just sort of came together that way that when I when I looked at the body of work I made it was like well this is obvious I'll bookend the album with these titles and everything in between are like little vignettes of you know, uh, reflections on, you know, my, my, my twenties, I, you know, I grew up in California and it was an amazing time, but it's like time for something new now. I think it's so smart to bookend the way you did with those two songs. Cause it's like, you're listening to that first song and the very first line is baby, it's time I was leaving. Yeah. You know, it's sort of like, you're just staking out the claim for the whole record right there. Yeah. You know? Yeah. Um, it's cool. I mean, it, if I'd have tried to plan it and tell you that I had this big vision and that everything was going to be scheduled and budgeted, I, I don't think it would have turned out how it did. I think a lot of what happened, and I'm glad people are responding so nicely to it, is just I just let myself be free and creative and and didn't have any expectation of any outcome and, you know, popped down to L.A. whenever I could, maybe once a week, you know, and sang a little bit. And it just was a really kind of easy thing to do. It didn't stress me out, which usually being in the studio stresses me out. So <laughs> this was a good experience. Lissy's in our studio, My Wild West. The album drops February 12th. And uh, we'd love to hear some more music if we could. Yeah, so I was thinking maybe I'd play an oldie for you guys. If you're into Absolutely. It. I think yeah, that was sure. sort of part of what I was told I was supposed to do. So. <laughs> <laughs> you're in. You're the artist. Yeah. You're in complete control. Oh, okay. Your this... your people outside of this building, they don't know what happened. We, <laughs> yeah. We're just friends here. You can do whatever you want. Well, I'll play you. Uh, this is a song that was like big for me, especially in Europe, um, where I've been able to do well in Norway and London. And it's called um, When I'm Alone. From my first album, Catching a Tiger. I turned my back. You were gone in a flash like you all. Always do. You've always gone hard somewhere. So in the foreign, I thought it was you, and I spun like a kid who just got out of school. But it's almost always and never you, and never you. I stay. Like a child, my inside when oh, 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 and when I'm alone, with you and you make me feel, and you make me feel when I'm alone, with you and you are the one, you are the one, and when I reach out and I. Only grab air and it kill me to think that you never did care And it's hopeless You were always run Half somewhere else And I go in a tantrum Why are you oh, oh, such a
I'm having a lot of fun today. Oh, good. This is really good. This is so awesome. good. Awesome. I'm having fun too. Lissy is in our studios uh, this afternoon. Lissy.com is where you can go to pre order My Wild West have February 12th. And, uh, you know, when you go there, you can check out. Uh, they are selling it different ways, including some signed items and bundles that are pretty cool. So, mm -hmm. and when you do the pre-order, you get two songs right now. You don't have to wait. Yeah, you get uh, "Hero" and "Don't You Give Up on Me," which I'm both of which I'm playing today. So hopefully, that'll get you excited. You know, uh, <laughs> you mentioned the farm in Iowa. The first time I heard that, I thought Iowa, but you were born right across the state line, Rock Island. Yeah, so I grew up in Rock Island, Illinois, which is across. The Mississippi from Iowa so it's like the quad cities so it's essentially kind of like you know you spend a lot of time on the Iowa side um and I have traveled all around Iowa throughout the years so I just it's a beautiful state yeah you know I don't don't tell Illinois but I like Iowa more than Illinois <laughs> so those border wars can get ugly <laughs> oh right? yes yeah you would probably know about that yeah, yeah absolutely yeah. Uh, you know, the number of people who come to Kansas City and say, hey, Kansas from stage and get booze because they're actually in Missouri. <laughs> Missouri yeah. It's uh, it's we try to not hurt anybody. It's uh, kind of confusing, though, because isn't there there's a Kansas City, Missouri and a Kansas City, Kansas. Yeah. So it's like. Right. And you know. yeah. And they're like there's not even an inch in between the two of them. Right. So but there's a subtle rivalry or, not or so maybe subtle. not so okay. subtle sometimes. <laughs> yeah. I think it's better if you just own it. Um you know, so Rock Island, Illinois, you know, you maybe don't think of that as this vast cultural hub, but you were sort of born knowing that this is what you were going to do, right? Yeah, from as early as I can remember, I just loved to sing and I was always making up songs. I mean, my sister's got a four year old and she's constantly singing and making up songs and it's brilliant. And I just think that's really cool. But I remember that being the case. I mean, I would just sing my feelings and sing my thoughts and just sing, sing, sing all the time, which probably got annoying. Um, but my grandfather was like a, an international barbershop quartet champion. The Vikings. Yeah, the Vikings. You did your research. Um, and so I think, and my grandmother's a good singer. Everyone in my family like can sing pretty well, you know? So I think that it's just kind of in my genes and then always knew I, like, I love to perform and I, I wanted, you know, I always felt like I had something to say. I'm the youngest of four. So maybe it was like, no one ever listened to me. So it was good that they did it because it motivated me to be like, I'm going to write songs and everyone's going to listen to me. So, yeah. So that making up melodies around the house, you still do that. Just now you do it for the dogs. Oh, yeah, I do. I sing to my dog and I'll I'll use some of the melodies that I come up with to write songs. If the dog is OK, like the dog, <laughs> it has to pass the dog test first. Right. Yeah. Like there was one day we were in the car and I mean, it was embarrassing and it's really dorky, so I'm not going to sing it for you. But or even the other day I was making chili and I put corn flour in my chili and masa harina and I couldn't find it. And I'm singing like this really awesome melody, but it's just like, where is the masa harina? But <laughs> like, and then I'm like, if anyone was around right now, they'd be like, what is your deal? I spent a lot of time alone. So I kind of talked to myself, but I said, I sing to myself. Yeah. So your, your mom kind of knew that this was happening. And so she got you lessons pretty early on. Yeah. So my uh, sister and I both like started doing like these kind of singing, dancing, performing arts kinds of things at like five, you know, and we'd put on these shows with other kids our age and um, it was just so fun. And I was Annie when I was 10. And that was like a big responsibility. I did 80 shows and was at a dinner theater. And so, you know, my mom had remarked like how serious I took it. And I was very responsible and aware of like, I have a show. And, you know, I was going to school too, but I was like nine. And I, I just loved like I loved the whole thing, and I loved the adrenaline, and I loved performing. Um, so after that, I got kind of, I started taking, like, classical training, vo like, voice lessons. But then I started playing guitar and, like, turned into kind of a rebel in high school. So then I just, you know, I didn't take voice lessons after that. I just kind of did my own thing. The uh, You picked up the guitar briefly around sixth grade, but maybe not quite ready for it. Yeah, I knew, like two chords in sixth grade, but I didn't practice and I couldn't like join them together. Um, <laughs> my mom had actually my mom, my dad had given my mom a, a classical guitar when they, cause they've been together since high school. And I, I hate like hate myself for it because when I was in high school, I traded it in to get a different guitar that was like steel string, which is, I wish I had that classical guitar that my dad had given my mom. I was like, so such a stupid 16 year old. But, um, 
Yeah, my mom had this one song that she knew a C chord, and it was like, you take a stick of bamboo, you take a stick of bamboo. And that was like how it went. So she taught me that. But she doesn't play the guitar either. Anyway, so yeah, it wasn't until high school that I really started to spend a lot of time in my room, like trying to like not only learn the chords, but string them together. And then after that, it's just muscle memory. So yeah. Yeah. We'd love to hear another song if we could. Yes. I'm going to play you a song I wrote about leaving Ojai, which is Paradise. Um, it's called Ojai. I got a feeling like I'm almost there And I think I might belong somewhere As I cut these ties I realize I've been disbelieving in my own heart and the deceiving is the hardest part And I feel the knowing That I must be going over oh, I, I don't want to leave you behind But you know that I made up my mind so good I, I know I'm going to see you again And I'll be thinking of you until then Oh, I I miss the seasons I miss the land Miss them for reasons I don't understand I took it all for granted I'd bloom where I was planted Or I, I don't want to leave you behind But you know that I made up my mind so good I know I'm gonna see you again And I'll be thinking of you until then Oh, I Oh, Beautiful. Thank you. Leslie is our guest. That's another one of the songs that's going to appear on My Wild West when it drops February 12th. You can pre order that now. Signed items, bundles, or just the regular album. When you pre order, you get a couple of the songs now. Don't you give up on me and Hero? Uh, and it's just a brilliant piece of work. You can do that through Lissy.com. You know, you were talking about having started off in sort of the theatrical side of things and and, it, you know, it certainly sounded like adolescent angst is what drove you to the guitar and songwriting and sort of a shift. Yeah. But the one thing that you didn't, and, and maybe a, a little bit more edge to the vocals, put a little bit of the classical training behind you. But one thing that you didn't put behind you is just that singing out. Yeah, I got to project. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. And, and it's like, it's like an amazing instrument. Well, thank you. So it's nice that you have that. Yeah, no, I, I, I feel... I remember I had a friend in high school that 
you know, she said, because I think she wasn't sure what she was going to do after school, after high school ended, like what she really wanted to do with her life kinds of questions. And her saying to me, like, you're lucky that you have something that you like are passionate about. And it hadn't really ever occurred to me before. But I think, yeah, it's, uh, for anyone, it's like if you have something like you're really into and passionate about, that's great. And um, singing is it for me. So I've, I've, you know, put in the hours. Yeah. So I've warmed up my voice and I spent a lot of time singing. So the tough thing, though, is that you you came from a family of like we were four kids and and the first three are all kind of like achievers. And so you're supposed to go to school (laughs) and you don't necessarily need school to chase what you're passionate about. So Colorado State for the skiing. I kind of did just go there. Well, A, because there was like a chart. I mean, it's a great school. But there was a chart on the website where if I put in my, you know, ACT and SAT score and my grade point average, like it basically was like, you know, like a chart that said, okay, if this is your scores and your grades, like you're in. And I was like, oh, I can definitely get in there Um, because I was kind of really stopped enjoying school my junior year. I really struggled. Like I I went through some dark days. And um, but I think like a lot of people, adolescents do. I mean, being a teenager can be tough. Yeah. Um, I would not want to do that again. No. But yeah, so I uh, went to Colorado State because I knew, you know, I could go there and probably not have to also join like a Greek system. Like I knew there'd be lots of music and, and ways for me, to, even if I was in school, to like go out and, and play and like see bands. And like there's a big, you know, music scene there. So that was important to me and the skiing too. Yeah. So you'd done the, the clubs and the coffee houses and all of that. <laughs> Um, but really, oddly, the thing that sort of led you away from school was a semester abroad. Yeah, I did a semester in Paris, which was awesome. Um, and, uh, you know, had my own, I, I opted out of like living in the more dorm style. I wanted to have my own apartment. And having come from, you know, the Quad Cities, I my older siblings were all like, you know, went off to Stanford and Northwestern. And my brother had been to Germany and my dad had had a foreign exchange student. So I was like exposed to different things growing up. But um you know, to be 20 and like not really have been anywhere before and like be totally independent. Like this is before smartphones or I didn't even have a phone, you know, it's like to suddenly be like, okay, how do I get around Paris? And like, don't really speak French. And like, you know, I think getting through those like five months confidently built my confidence to be like, well, you know, if I can do this, I can just move to LA and, and try to get discovered. So that's what I did. And you know, the funny thing about that story is that it worked. It did. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> right? Because, yeah. I mean, how many people try that and then... Yeah, well, I mean, I touch on it a little bit in the in the new album. There's a song called Hollywood. I mean, Hollywood is like this brilliant place that can feed your dreams. And it's inspiring to see people make these amazing things happen. But it can be a very cruel place that's full of rejection and sorrow <laughs> as well, you know? Uh I, don't, I think I was just really kind of naive and I just maybe, you know, I've been saying this a lot in interviews, but I think like I just saw in movies, like that's what you did. You like moved to LA and you got discovered. And <laughs> <laughs> I just was so like blindly just like, oh yeah, that's how you do it. Um, and I, I think also since I'm like Midwestern, I'm real open and friendly. Like I didn't have any trouble talking to people. I mean, even if people looked at me like, ew, why are you talking to me? You know, I like didn't even care. I was like, oh, well, I guess that person's not very nice. Like, I'll talk to the next person. So I just started playing my guitar everywhere and got discovered. So 250,000 copies of the first record. That's pretty amazing. Yeah. I mean, that's a, I mean, I think sometimes people lose focus for like what constitutes success, but that's a huge number for a debut CD. Yeah, I really think um, I was fortunate. You know, I didn't get dropped after my first album. So (laughs) that in (laughs) itself was a, was an achievement. No, but I, it was good. I think I, I had a lot of people that helped me get the word out. You know, I was with Columbia, Sony in the UK and, um, had like great teams in different territories that really worked the album. So, I mean, I can't take all the credit. It's, it's been a lot of people who made that happen, but yeah, that's an accomplishment. I can, I have some gold records. I I went gold in in Norway and in the UK, but I'm don't hang them up in my house. I don't, because I think that's bragging. So (laughs) mom and dad's house. Yeah. Yeah. So, uh, 
you know, I was reading interviews after the first record, and, you know, it was sort of like this transition from sort of a singer-songwriter to a rock band. And after listening to the third record, I wondered if you had, like, another transition that you felt like you'd gone through or how you just viewed your own, your own journey. Well, I think, you know, the first album was about heartache. And, like, you know, it was... I genuinely had written, like, all these songs of, like, you know, romance romantic sadness um, about a relationship that I had that went on for a long time and ended and that was really hard and then I think my second album Back to Forever was more like me coming to the end of my 20s and being like oh I don't have forever anymore you know when you're 20 you're like ah I've got forever to figure out stuff and then it's like oh now I'm gonna be 30 and I know that's still quite young but there was this awareness of like you know take me back to forever it is one of the songs on Back to Forever of like I don't have forever ahead of me and so I think there was a lot of like sentimental feelings and I wrote the second album and like more analysis whereas this third album I mean there aren't really that many love songs on it it's more it's really personal just in like how I what my relationship with myself is and with the world around me and what I you know what I think will really make me happy and trying just to find a nice life I think you know now I'm 33 it's like a time to sort of, you know, buy a house. I need to start a retirement fund. I don't have uh, one of those. <laughs> like, you know, there, there, there is not a song on the album called Retirement no, there Fund. Isn't, I, but, just so that everybody knows. But there is kind of like the third album. I think is a shift of me, kind of like, you kind of have a little more peace within yourself. You care a little bit less about what people think. You know, I'm, I'm just sort of having boundaries of like, I don't want to do that. I do want to do that. So I think this album is more personal and just about me and like my journey than about like, you know, a guy that, you know, there's like one sad boy song on there, I think, which for me is pretty good because that used to be all my songs were about. Um, yeah. So if that answers your question and sound wise, I mean, I think it's a balance because it's like I, I got away from the acoustic and now I've been doing some solo touring just because I wanted to. And it's been nice to get back to this to just, yeah. you know, I'm not the greatest guitar player, but it's it's about the voice and so it's been really liberating so now i think i'll do you know i'll do electric band stuff i'll do solo acoustic stuff you know i might just do some like duo guitar stuff i mean really just whatever i feel like so you know relationships are supposed to bring joy just kick those sad boys to the curb yeah well you know i realized that maybe that's maybe this i need to work on some of my stuff <laughs> in order to like have a relationship work, you know, I mean, I think that's you can sing a song about a relationship gone wrong, and then and then you can also say, okay, well, what am I doing that is that I maybe need to work on before I can like get into a healthy relationship, <laughs> you know? So there's some like self analysis, some personal growth going on. Yeah. Um, and I'm just so busy too. It's like I haven't had the time to meet anyone anyway. So. Well, the thing that you have been working on is My Wild West. And yes. it is out February 12th, and it's brilliant. It's great. Thank you so you much, You can pre-order it at lissy.com, and we'd love to get one more song out of you yes, if we could. Yes, this is the um, – and I feel like I should tell people it's L-I-S-S-I-E. Yes. Because they – no one could ever spells my name right, so L-I-S-S-I-E. This is the single off the new album. It's called Don't You Give Up On Me. You set the sun, I feel your way. I look at the ocean so big and bright My only ghost There's what I fear the most is me I left you on the coast For something only I can see What kind of world will there be When I wake up from this dream I hear you call so far away Just keep me close when I'm afraid And don't you give up on me As I dive into the dark Slip into the endless sea Don't you give up on me Are you swimming in the stars Breathing in eternity Don't you give up on me You are the Look at the ocean, you help me change And you keep on reminding me of the darkness Only I can see oh, 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 oh. Oh, oh, What kind of world will it be When I wake up from the stream I 
hear you call so far away just keep me close when i'm afraid and don't you give up me as i dive into the dark slip into the endlessly don't you give up me are you swimming in the stars breathing in eternity don't you give up me and don't up on me now don't you give up on me now don't you give up on me now don't you give up on me now oh, 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 oh. and don't you give up on me That's Lissy, L-I-S-S-I-E, dot com, actually, if you want to head over to the website. Yeah, check it and, out. And uh, that's the new single, Don't You Give Up On Me. And you can catch the video for it on her website. And you'll also get that free along with Heroes when you pre-order My Wild West. It does hit February 12th, and there are signed items and bundles available. We need to get you back and have you play in Kansas City like a club. Yes, I would I would like that. Um We'll have to make that happen. I don't know. Yeah. I know I'm doing a U.S. tour in April, but it's just not coming here. So we'll work. Maybe on I'll that. come back in the summertime. We'll start. <laughs> we'll start. Uh, we'll start stomping our little foot. Yes, uh, please do. Uh, is there a festival here in the summer? Maybe I could come do. Yeah, we'll work on that. Me? We'll see what we can okay. do. <laughs> yeah. All we'll, right. We'll put the word out. Well, I really appreciate the support so much, and this has been really fun. Well, it's uh, it's just been a joy. We've never had the chance to have you in the studio. And, you know, it's funny when you have somebody in the studio and they perform acoustically, you get this sort of authentic thing uh, that is not really a part of the record. It's sort of like there's uh, flying without a net. It's, you know, it's pretty exciting and, and it makes it more personal. And so it's really been great to get to know you a little bit. Yeah, more. you as well. Um, it's cool. I'll come back anytime. Lissy in the studios today on the bridge. Thanks so much. Thank you so much. You're welcome. <laughs>